Good morning. Today on Spotlight, how one Michigan-based corporation is giving back to Detroit and the many different communities it serves. Why revitalization is a must for Delta Dental of Michigan, Indiana, and Ohio. Margaret Trimmer, Vice President of Strategic Partnerships, will join us. And later on our Sunday program, photographer of the stars, Linda Solomon, will give us a peek inside her new book about the late Aretha Franklin, Detroit and America's Queen of Soul. It's Sunday, October the 6th. I'm Chuck Stokes, and this is Spotlight. You know, we oftentimes hear corporations say they want to have a big footprint on something. In Delta Dental's case, it'd probably be more appropriate to say you just want to have a big smile and take a big bite out of Southeast Michigan. I love that. Can um, I borrow that tagline? You can borrow it. You can borrow it. Um, would that be appropriate? Absolutely. You know, we want to um, be where our customers are. We want to do well, of course, and we want our customers to do well, but we also want to do good. We want to create economic energy in the communities where we do business because that's going to help our customers succeed. Right. Uh, it's Delta Dis Dental of Michigan. I know you also are in Ohio and Indiana. You're headquartered in Okemos. Uh, but the lion's share of the work that you're doing uh, in communities and stuff, would you say that's in Southeast Michigan because well, of the population here? Well, Southeast Michigan is our largest book of business. It's where we have the most members. Um, frankly, we have almost just two million in the auto industry alone. We cover two million lives in that industry. And so this is a hub for us of activity, but we're also growing in Ohio. Columbus and Cleveland are big markets for us, as well as Indianapolis. Uh, your CEO has been profiled in Cranes and other places. Uh, he's very visible. Uh, and just reading some of the stuff I've read on him, it appears as though he has a very strong philosophy about what he wants Delta Dental to be. And then, of course, he has great people like you working with him making sure that all of this happens. Yeah, Goran Dracovic took over as CEO in January, and it's really important to him that Delta Dental be a force for good in our communities every day. And so we've been challenged to invest in the right things. We invest in health, we invest in education, we invest in economic development. We call our, our investment pillars healthy, smart, vibrant. And those are the kind of communities where people want to live, work, play, where talent will be attracted and mm -hmm. will stay. Give the viewers out there some idea in terms of dollars and cents, uh, what kind of money you're talking about that are being pumped into Southeast Michigan? Well, we have two different buckets from which we fund initiatives in the community. We have a foundation, the Delta Dental Foundation, which puts almost $4 million into our markets. And we have the corporate side, where we are doing corporate good, and we put another $4 million million or so. In Southeast Michigan, probably three and a half to four million dollars a year. In a day and time where oftentimes people on the outside will criticize corporations because they, oh, they're all about making profit and just making as much money as they can. Obviously, that's not the case in your situation. Uh, why is it important for corporations such as yours to be able to get into the communities, have a big footprint, do these type of things that benefit the community? How does that come back in a good way? for Delta Dental? Well, we do very well. It's not like yeah. we don't make money. We are nearing the $5 billion mark. Mm -hmm. We cover almost 9 million lives in the three states. We believe it's our corporate responsibility. It's our purpose to really give back and to create energy and economic economic activity in our communities because that's where um, life happens. We want to be involved in creating a community where people can raise families, where the energy and the optimism are thriving. We want to be a part of what's good. And isn't that what anybody, individual or company, ought to be doing? Where would you say Southeast Michigan is right now? And and what do you hope it becomes? You know, it's interesting, in the three states where we do business, there are a lot of common denominators, a lot of common issues. And I would say the one that permeates all three states probably most uh, dominantly is the issue of talent, recruitment, retention. Understanding that a lot of our success, if not all of our success, is dependent on a viable workforce. And our companies, our customers are doing well right now. It's a moment in time that seems to be economically 
strong, but that won't continue if we don't find the workers for the next generation and the next generation. We're renovating our headquarters in Okemos in order to attract an appeal to this generation of workers. It's a very different generation, and all of the communities where we do business are wrestling with that. Basic needs are an issue in every community. Feeding, housing, clothing, people, underprivileged people is a very important focal point in, in all three states as well. Uh, you have also been involved with leadership uh, at the Detroit Regional Chamber's annual Mackinac Policy Conference. You present there, I think the last time around, uh, you talked a lot about civility uh, and some of those key corporate issues, certainly something that uh, Governor Snyder talked a lot about when he was there and something that Governor Whitmer has continued that conversation. Um, as you interact with these various leaders, what is it you hope they understand about what's needed to keep this region moving forward? Well, civility is a huge issue for us. I think you, you heard our tagline that we care, at Delta Dental, we care what goes in your mouth and we care what comes out of it. Speak <laughs> I <love> once, that. <laughs> think twice, right? Mm -hmm. um, we believe that civility and creating an environment in which people problem solve together is a very um, essential element of business success, of community success. Who wants to live in a hostile place? Who wants to work in a hostile workplace? So civility is a huge issue for us, but innovation, is a huge issue for us as well. And our CEO has made it a point. In fact, it's one of our pillars of our strategic plan to be on the cutting edge of healthcare innovation buy new companies, create new companies, invest in startups. That's something that we're spending a lot of time, energy, and resources on. All right, we're going to take a little break. When we come back, I want to talk about some of the things that you're doing in the community partnership with the University of Detroit Mercy's Dental School, uh, and then just sort of this friendly competition between corporations to try to make this place uh, a vibrant city. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back to Spotlight, talking to Margaret Trimmer, and she is a vice president over at Delta Dental, Michigan, Indiana, Ohio. You're going to add an another state pretty soon? For the moment, I think I've, I've got my work <laughs> cut out for me, small. yes. Um, you have a partnership with the University of Detroit Mercy, their dental school, which has been there for a long period of time. Uh, tell us a little bit about that and the clinics that you do. Yeah, well, at the U of D Mercy, our foundation has funded a mobile dental clinic. And I'm amazed how many times I'm on the highways here and I see our clinic going by. Um, we serve families and children, especially in underserved communities. And we, we treat a lot of kids and we offer services that Frankly, it's hard to find dental offices that are functioning in low-income communities, and so we fill in that gap. The foundation just invested in another one um, for Oakland County, so we're getting out there filling gaps, filling teeth, filling gaps. Um, the thing that people don't realize, and it's really important as a dental benefits provider that I stress, Oral health is connected to overall health in so many ways. Over 120 signs of disease can be spotted just by looking in our mouths, wow. from heart disease to diabetes, all kind of oral cancer. The mouth is a window into human health. And the number one um, chronic disease among children is untreated cavities. Wow. And I hear that every time I go to my hygienist as well, right? I want you and, to know. And it's true. And it's they're missing true. school time. Yeah. 51 million hours of learning are lost due to dental pain. Trying to make sure that that riverfront is open from bridge to bridge is so vitally important. And everybody talks about our international riverfront and the fact that it's so important, one, because it is an international riverfront. Most cities don't have that, but it also is such an attraction and can be the hottest real estate spot around. Oh, absolutely. Delta Dental's largest corporate investment ever is happening on the West Riverfront. We're putting $5 million into what will be called the Delta Dental Play Gardens, and we're trying to assemble 
other donors in the healthcare space so that we can raise awareness year round about health issues. We can sponsor 5K runs. We can bring the mobile dental clinic down to the, to the waterfront and give kids and families exams. We can talk about rethinking your drink and what's smart to put in your body um, and sugary drinks and how they cause all kinds of havoc. And so it's a huge investment for us, but we also saw it as an investment in downtown as much as it is an investment in the near west side neighborhoods. That park shakes hands with both the downtown business community and those neighborhoods. Margaret Truman, not too long ago, I saw a photo, photograph and some video of Dr. Vitti with the Detroit Public Schools, and he was talking about how they're trying to make sure that the buildings that our students are in, um, that they're drinking clean, safe water. Of course, that has become a huge issue, especially after what happened in Flint. Uh, it's also what we're putting into our bodies. Delta Dental has been involved in trying to make sure that the kids' water is safe. Oh, absolutely. It was a logical investment for us to make. The Delta Dental Foundation put $300,000 into that initiative and outfitted 14 buildings with brand new hydration stations. They're hydration stations that we've been putting in schools all over our territory, Michigan, Ohio, and Indiana. Water is the best drink for children, for adults, for any of us. And by golly, it has to be clean and lead free. Um, some years ago, I interviewed Dan Gilbert and he said, the one thing I want to do is create corporate competition, friendly competition in this region. Do you see that happening now as, as the city is rebounding, uh, corporations saying, you know, I don't want any one corporation to have everything. We want to get our corner of the market and if we all do part of it, then that's really what this is all about. Chuck, I'm so glad you said that because I don't see that happening in all of our markets like I see it happening here in Detroit. If Quicken Loans is investing in something, we all want to be a part of it, mm -hmm. right? And I think that has inspired a, a sense of doing well and doing good culturally in this community, but it doesn't happen everywhere. And we're a little frustrated in some of our markets because if we come in with a big investment, other companies will say, well, that's Delta Dental's thing. We're not gonna jump in, it's theirs. Here, my gosh, we've got an energy, a collectivist mindset, which is really important and it really is essential to lifting a whole community up. Final question, uh, 10 years from now, where do you see this region? Oh, I see it on top of the world. And when I saw the, the video Stephen McGee did, Anthem of Us, mm -hmm. and the energy that was created about it, Detroit was not re-anything. It just is. It's something you want to be a part of or you're missing out. I see that only continuing and getting better. All right, Margaret Trimmer, thanks so much for coming in. Keep up the good work. Keep Thank us you, posted Chuck. on all the things Delta Dental is doing, and uh, we'll keep tabs with you as well. Thank you for the opportunity. All right, it's our pleasure. Coming up, photojournalist Linda Solomon and her brand new book. Hey, welcome back to Spotlight. Joining me now is photojournalist, celebrity photojournalist Linda Solomon, also an author. Uh, and, and a friend. And a long time. <laughs> a long time. We won't long. say how long we we've known each say other. How long. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, we met each other when we were five, right? That's right. Okay, all That's right. right. So we're only 25 now. <laughs> uh, welcome to Spotlight. Oh, thank you. Pleasure mm -hmm. to be here. It's a pleasure having you. You have a new book. New uh, book. And I say new book because you've had lots of other books. Uh, uh, this one you. is called The Queen next door, um, Aretha Franklin, yeah. an intimate portrait. Uh, it's a wonderful book, uh, lots and lots of pictures behind the scenes, um, you. you know, at all sorts of things throughout her life. Uh, wow. When did you first meet Aretha? Well, I met her in 1983 at Channel 7. At Channel 7? Uh, at Channel 7. Oh, all right. She was going we to started it all, right? We did. <laughs> yeah. And I'll tell you, it was a day I'll never forget because mm. she was a guest on Kelly and Company. Sure. And I called and I said, may I come down and try to do a story for my column in the Detroit News? And they said, well, you can try. And we should probably say for, for the young folks out yes. there who may not have been around, Kelly and, Kelly and Company was... A, Monday through Friday yes. morning talk show and with John Kelly, Marilyn Turner, yes. and they had everybody on. Everybody who is anybody, and then they had the Queen of Soul. So when I heard the promo, I raced down and waited for her outside and introduced myself, and I said, thank you for coming home, because she was living in New York and L.A., and she came back to Detroit to help with her father, 
And I said, I have a column in the Detroit News. Can I take one photo of you? And she said, yes. And that photo is in the book. And then she performed in front of a very small, intimate audience on the talk show. And she accompanied herself at the piano. And I did ask her if I could take two more photographs, and she said, sure. And that started our relationship. She read the column. Aretha would read everything about herself. Mm -hmm. And she reached and, out. And, and she'd call you up yes. to tell you if she liked it or disliked it, you're too. You're right, <laughs> yeah. you're right. And thank goodness she liked it. And then I was invited to a party at Mary Young's where mm -hmm. I met her entire family. And that is really what helped the relationship grow for as many years that we were close and I was able to document her with her family. What and made you write this particular book? It's a tribute to her. It's a tribute to her in, in the way she loved her family. It, you'll see her with her siblings and her kids and her cousin and, and she was so devoted to family. And Did that's the theme of the book and then of course devoted to Detroit. Sure. And Did you have any of these conversations with her before she passed? Did she have an inkling that you were maybe oh. thinking about writing a book about her and she putting really together the book? Yeah. Or were you not even thinking about it I then? Wasn't. It wasn't until after she passed, then you said, yes. why? I've got all these photographs. Yes. What am I going to do with them? And then to work with Wayne State University Press, mm -hmm. I felt Aretha would want the book published in Detroit. And she would. She would. And the book shows how much she did to give back. And I don't think people have seen this side of her. The philanthropic the side. The philanthropic. Yeah. And she did so much to give back. And she brought the music industry back because if you wanted to perform with Aretha in the 80s, you had to perform with her in Detroit. So she did all of her television specials. She did the AMA show from Detroit with Channel 7. Uh -huh. So with that said, she was she a was big Detroit booster, she was and she a never forgot Detroit. where she came from. Never, never, no. never, never. And and the book captures that love of Detroit. She gave her heart and her soul to our city, yeah. and that's what I wanted to document. And and the book features those photographs of her giving back. The cover photo. When yeah. was that from? Well, that <laughs> that was a fun photograph because she had a masquerade ball at her home. And that was taken at her masquerade ball when she was Queen Nefertiti. And I just asked her to look out the window and, and she was just so much fun. And no one could give a party like Aretha. Yeah, so the book uh, features her, wonderful parties. her parties and her invitations to her Christmas party so people would get to read her menus. And you know, she personally addressed all her invitations. I do know that. You remember, because yeah, yeah. you were there too. And, and you, would, you would think to yourself, where in the world did she find the time to I do that? Because uh, normally when you're a star like that you just have somebody do all those sorts of <laughs> That's things right. but she wanted that personal touch she did and she could live an authentic life in Detroit she did her own grocery shopping so many people have Aretha stories just like in Memphis everyone has an Elvis story everyone in Detroit has an Aretha story mm -hmm. because she was so involved with our city and we would see her everywhere but seeing her with her family with her brother Cecil Reverend Cecil Franklin who was her manager is featured throughout the book her nieces Sabrina and Sabrina her niece Sabrina has written the afterword to the book and Burt Bacharach has written a beautiful heartfelt foreword along with Sabrina's heartfelt words. Well you're also a big Detroit booster. Uh, you're nice enough Thank you. to come Thank you. share this with this us first. Uh, you're, but you're getting ready to go on a national tour to yes. help promote the book yes. uh, because she was a world icon and world icon. this is a book that people in Memphis, people in Los Angeles, yes. people in little small towns uh, down south, what have you, uh, they relate to Aretha because she performed everywhere and they're going to be interested in these photographs that you're yes. sharing with the it world. It is truly an intimate photographic album that she would almost have on her own coffee table because mm -hmm. it features, as I mentioned, her family in such a beautiful way. And, and you mentioned one photograph when she invited the entire Michigan State University cheerleading squad to her home right. when her son graduated from college, which just showed her incredible love for her kids. And, and you know, it's, she was an incredible woman in every sense of the word. And I feel blessed that I was able to capture so many special things with her. When you approached this book and decided, yes. how do I put it all together? One thing I noticed is that you sort of divide it up into different categories and different chapters of her life. Yes. Uh -huh. um, uh, was it easy to do that? Or no. was it, I, I mean, given <laughs> it, all that she did, that had to be a nightmare to figure out was. how do I 
But you know, Divvy this up. I try to feature the events that I felt readers would want to see. I, I captured her during her first performance with the DSO. Mm -hmm. And she allowed me to stand with her on stage during the rehearsal. I couldn't believe it. And then her iconic concert with James Brown when the Queen of Soul performed with the Godfather of Soul. Yeah, that's the, a great photograph. And yeah. the Rolling Stones when they came here to perform with her for the music video with Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi Goldberg's in the book as well. So, you know, I, I just went through and I thought, I think her fans would want to see these photographs. And I feel that these are the photographs that really show Aretha in, in the truest sense. When Spotlight returns, Linda reveals her favorite photo of Aretha. We'll be right back. As someone who has photographed celebrities uh, for many, many years, you used to do the Academy Awards, and uh, you know everybody knows you, and Tony Bennett on oh, down the line. Was there a favorite photograph of Aretha that you took? That's such an interesting question. I think this one. Okay. Because it was just a quiet moment. And then I also like the photograph where she's with the iconic pink Cadillac. And yeah. she's looking down at the car and respect is on the license plate. And I often wondered, what was she thinking? You know, and it's a photograph that is on the back cover. And I'm very grateful to Cadillac and to be able to give kids, the Detroit students, an opportunity to learn more about Aretha. What do you miss most about Aretha? Everything. <laughs> but I, li I miss her laugh. Yeah. She would call me and we would talk as girlfriends. And, and you know, once, it, I think you'll find this interesting, I received a Facebook request from someone I didn't know. And at first I thought, well, I don't really know this person. And I didn't, I shouldn't say accept the person right away and then all of a sudden I received a phone call, Linda, it's really me and it was Aretha asking me to be a Facebook friend and after she passed away I realized that on her personal Facebook the great queen of soul, an international treasure, only had 22 friends on Facebook. Wow. So I'm very grateful yeah, that she considered me one of the lucky 22 and she posted very personal things about finding a cure for cancer. Mm -hmm. And you know, her public Facebook page, of course, would have thousands, but on her personal page, Great. she was just a very private person. And again, I, I'm so grateful that she trusted me as a journalist to document some very exciting career moments with her. Well, it's a very special book. It's called The Queen Next Door by Linda Solomon, Aretha Franklin, an intimate portrait. It will be in bookstores when? October 14th. October 14th, yes. all across the nation. All across the nation. All right. And, you're and here in Detroit, thank goodness for Wayne State University all right. Press. All right. And you're, on your way to, and you're on your way to New York to yes. do some more interviews and promote the book. Yes. All right. Linda Solomon, thank thanks you. so much for coming thank in. You. Best of Barry. All thank right. you. And uh, safe travels. Thank you. All right. And I'm Chuck Stokes. We'll be back next week with more newsmakers in the spotlight. We hope you have a great week.